This will be a short video. Uh, I'm just what I'm advertising here is I'm selling my uh, Nikon D. No, was it this AF Nikkor Macro 105 millimeter f 2.8. Um, so this is kind of a little bit of review and a showing off of the lens. Uh, if you're watching this, it's probably not for sale anymore, I've already sold it. But for any of you who are interested in maybe getting a second hand one of these, this is my one here. Okay, what you'll see is 105, I've got a little polarizer on it already. Um, so that is going to be coming in its little, little bum bag case which uh, is highly embarrassing. Uh, and that comes with a whole pile of different filters on there, because this was like an old school lens, which obviously needed different color filters in the past. Uh, the good thing about this is that it can both fit on your Nikon and with a small adapter, you can stick it onto your Canon if you want to do any video with it. And you've got the aperture control on the back of the lens here, which if you move that bit, you can then change the, you can manually change the aperture um, which you can't do with the modern AFS VR 105mm macro. You've also got a manual or an automatic setting. So here, you just push that in and it becomes manual. Push it in again, becomes automatic. If you move that now, nothing changes. Put it back to manual and now suddenly the, the focus is changing. As you focus, I'll just get it so that it's not limited. So you've got limited or full for faster autofocus. On full, whenever you zoom into the closest, you notice the top bit keeps coming out, it comes out a good little bit there. Its closest distance is 314, 31 centimeters. And that's 31 centimeters from the back of the lens, I think. So, you, so your, your subject is pretty much there, you know, very, very close. The reason I'm selling this is just because I just don't use it that much. I used it a lot when I was in Japan because I was uh, shooting lots of interesting bugs and uh, insects and all that kind of stuff. And I've used it whenever I was doing my jewelry photos as well, which I'll put the link down below to show you how to get the sharpest image possible when doing jewelry stuff. So jewelry, macro stuff, insects, this is pretty good. The autofocus isn't hugely fast, um, but with macro, you're probably gonna be doing it on a tripod and you're probably gonna be doing more manual focus. I'll show you with the other thing which I'm gonna be selling, I'll do this in another video, it's my Nikon D300. In the actual lens, just for I put it onto the actual camera, uh, you can see as you zoom in, that bit doesn't change. So that's good. For me, there's a couple little specks of something on there. Never noticed it. it well, you, you really need to get a microscope out and you see some specks of something on there, but they don't matter to the actual image. To stick it onto the camera, goes on there. So this is on the Nikon D300 and we'll put it so that everything's set and we'll put it onto auto autofocus. And if we put the lens cap on, what it'll do, it'll have to search for its focus point. So here you'll see the speed of the autofocus. Not fast. You're not gonna be doing sports with this, that's for sure. However, if you're doing bugs, if you're doing macro, you're probably just gonna have it on its closest setting and you're gonna be moving the camera back and forth. I'll show you, in fact, I'll show you just now, if I take off the circular polarizer off the front. The closest I can get, I'll take a photo with this. So if I am standing here and I focus on the top of my camera and take a photo. So this is the view that I get from back here. I'll just focus it on the actual lens which is quite difficult when I don't have my glasses on. And when you start getting closer, and the more that this starts zooming in, or effectively getting to more of its macro, its effective aperture gets smaller. So instead of 2.8, which is its maximum, which if you're shooting from far away, which it, let's see if I do that. Yeah, that's f2.8, so that's like super bright. Oh God, I'm gonna have to change that. So that's f2.8, but then I can get super close to the camera. Let's see if I can do that just now. So that's that 90th of a second, as you can see, it's getting pretty dark. I'll just put the ISO up a little bit. So that 90th of a second, getting pretty close to the camera, but I'm not even near its closest bit. So there, yeah. And I've, I've still got a good bit extra to get uh, closer with as well. So for close up, yeah, it's a macro lens. You're not gonna get better than that. 
for sharpness, unbelievably sharp. Um, for build quality, I think it's pretty darn good. It feels much more metal than plastic. Uh, for its size of the actual grip here, very good as well. Um, it's limit, it's manual, it's good you can, for video as well. Great lens, which you can also put onto your Canon cameras. And it's a full frame lens, so you can put it on a full frame Canon uh, and your full frame Nikon D700s and so forth. So that's my quick little review of the lens which I'm selling, but it's probably not for sale anymore. Hope that helps, bye bye.